Hey guys, so today I have a special guest with me. I am so thrilled to be sitting here talking to Susan Eisenberg, the voice of Wonder Woman and in Injustice 2. How are you doing today, Susan? I'm so well, thank you. I can't tell you how just ecstatic I am to be speaking with you. This is so amazing. Ah, uh, that's so su- I mean, thank you, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been voicing Wonder Woman for over 15 years now, right? Yeah, no, I got the job. Um, I think I auditioned in 2000, and then we started up on Justice League. So yeah, it's been about 17 years. So you have voiced her not only in the Justice League cartoon and several animated movies as well, but you're also now voicing her in various video games as well. I am, you know, and that's just um, when the show, when Justice League ended, uh, you know, I thought, okay, that was a great run. That is that was an amazing experience. And then I just thought, okay, it's it's done. And when I got asked to do some of the movies, um, that's when it just, there was a resurgence and I got to do it again and then again and again. And so, yeah, I've been really, really lucky to um, be voicing her in, you know, in some, in some of the video games, yeah. You disappoint me, Selena. Yeah. I get that a lot. Your confidence plays tricks on you. Begin. As a gamer, we're kind of used to seeing the finished product. Right. But could, but could you give some insight on what it's like, like inside the booth when you're actually recording for a video game character? You know, it's funny because um, I, I've mentioned this many times. When you're recording, as opposed to the Justice League where you're recording with everybody, so you're there in the room with Batman and Superman and Hawkgirl and etc cetera, etc cetera. when you're recording a video game you're usually by yourself um, in fact you're always by yourself there's a director of course and typically the writer maybe an executive or two um, with the game but you're by yourself in the booth and so and you don't always know the context of what you're doing and so um, you're given your script and your words to say, but the director is there to give you the larger picture, to give you a sense of the universe in which you're working and living. Mm-hmm. And um, so without that context, it's it's pretty impossible to know. And even with it, sometimes it's pretty impossible to know because you don't have a sense of the other characters in the game, um, but you're given your storyline, unless it's very top secret in which you're not even given that. Um, so it's a very, very different experience. It's, um, there's so much go, as you know, probably better than I, (laughs) there's so much that goes into this video game and a video game like Injustice. It's, uh, it's beyond collaborative because, um, people have been working on this game for years and now it's like, dun, da, da, da. you know, you can finally talk about it. Um, you can admit that you're, yes, you're the Wonder Woman in that. And, um, you know, it's thrilling that it's actually out now and the game and the games can begin. No, it is. It is great. I've played a little bit of the game so far and I'm having so much fun with it. And I'm so glad that you were able to reprise your role as Wonder Woman because for me, I didn't grow up with the cartoon. Uh, I was definitely a kid during that time, but it just, it missed me. And so as an adult, I actually really got into it because of uh, the Batman Arkham games. Oh, sure. So sure. yeah, I became this huge Batman fan because of that. And then started watching the Justice League and actually hearing your voice in the game is so amazing to, as a player because it's like, you know, Wonder Woman's really there. Well, and it's, you know, I think for the people who did either grow up with Justice League or, you know, got, you know, introduced to it later, there's a familiarity. Um, and Definitely. Cert- you know, and I think that's important. I mean, I think there's a fami- familiarity and also like there's a continuity to it. So um, I think that not that, I mean, they've obviously introduced other voices as Wonder Woman over the years, many other voices and and well-known voices. But I think that if if it's like one of the first that you've been exposed to Mm -hmm. and um, you know, that stays with you. And so to be asked to do it and then to be asked to do it again, um, in, in, in justice to, you know, it's beyond lucky. You know, I just, I'm, I feel just so, so, so happy about it. 
well, as gamers, I can say that we feel lucky that you're still you're still playing the role. And I mean, you and Kevin and George, like having all of you guys as the Trinity was just it was so great. The only thing missing is that you just don't, you don't get to work with each other. Right. So unlike, you know, with Justice League, that's that was one of the joys is that you're all together in the room and you can play off of each other. I know that Kevin's in the game. I know Phil Lamar's in the game. I know that, you know, um, that, you know, George is in the game, but it's not like we work together on the game. I would imagine it would be a little bit more, maybe a little bit more difficult because you're not really playing off of another actor's energy. You're just, I mean, it's very focused on you, right? It is, and it is more challenging. Um, if you're lucky, and I was, then you have a voice director who can, um, you know, feed you the lines. In in this case, it was Amanda Wyatt, who is an extraordinary director, and she would read me in so that she would give me the lines before, and it would just give you a sense of, like you say, the energy or... Um, it just helps you out. It just helps you out so much with your own performance to have somebody reading that into, you know, reading into you, you know, the, the lines that you have before. So I, I was very lucky. But no, in the room where you do an animated show, you're all together and you're you're not ad libbing or anything like that. I mean, you're you have to stick to the script and there's certainly timing involved, but you have a camaraderie and you have an energy in the room that you don't get with a video game. So did you have to audition for Wonder Woman this time around or was it just sort of uh, uh, were you no, just offered? I, I was just offered. I mean, that that that's, you know, a, um, a rarity to be, you know, being given an offer rather than having to audition. But I've been really, really lucky with Injustice and with the DCU online game that I do, you know, which is also just a total privilege. I was just asked to do those games. I wasn't, um, I didn't have to audition for them, which, you know, if you think about it, Warner Brothers, you know, is doing Injustice and they obviously know me from the Justice League. Right. So, uh, you know, because we did it there, we, we recorded at Warner Brothers. So they're familiar with me. They know my voice. They know my range. So I don't think that they needed me to audition for it. Um, had they asked, I pr I would have done it, but I'm I'm thrilled and delighted that they didn't ask. Could you talk about what the audition process is like? I mean, is it different when you're doing something for animation versus when you're doing something for video games, or is it pretty similar? I, I'd say those are similar um, because again, you're auditioning by yourself, so you're not you don't have the advantage to you know of having somebody else reading the scenes with you. So you have to make it real for yourself in, in, in the booth. And whether it's an animated series or a video game, you're, you know, you're embodying this character and you have to make those scenes come off the page. And so you have to really be aware of who's, you know, what is the scene? Who are you in the scene with? Who's saying the line to you before? What are you feeling? It's, it's interesting with the games because I've done a bunch now that when you're talking to the player, there's a certain cadence that goes on when you do that. And so I'm really familiar with that now, as opposed to in the beginning. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's not hard like it used to be um, when you'd have to create, when you'd have to create that from scratch. I know what that is now. And certainly any time that I have to work on a Wonder Woman thing, it's, again, I'm not conjuring it up from scratch. There's there's a body of, of work and experiences with her um, at this stage. But when I audition for, for, you know, either a video game or an animated show or an animated movie, again, you're, you're trying to, you're, you know, you're acting. So, um, you know, you have to, you have to treat it like that. You have to approach it like that. Who am I in the scene with? What's my objective here? And, you know, it's just sometimes once in a while you're lucky because somebody will read read with you, but most of the time mm -hmm. you're reading by yourself. So if you have to be, you know, the aggressor, if you have to be yelling, if you're fighting in <laughs> combat, all of that you have to create in your own mind. And you have to bring that energy to it. If you're running, if you're, you know, yelling because there are bullets flying by you, you have to create that atmosphere. And so that the read, you know, that you're giving relays that and that the person listening on the other side 
can imagine that you're in combat or that you're running from the enemy or you're casting a spell against the evil witch. All these things you've just got to, that's the imagination, you know, that's the fun of it. Absolutely. And I know that uh, a while back there was a Twitter hashtag going around about performance matters. Right. And I mean, for me, like speaking on the gamer side, a voice actor's performance can totally change the immersion in the game. Because when you're watching a movie, you're kind of like, okay, you're watching the actors interact with each other. But when you're playing a game, you're you're embodying that character. And if if there's not like if you can't believe that you're there and if you can't believe that the NPCs around you are real people, then it, it can really take you out of it. Oh, I think it can be really jarring. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I think staying consistent with um, the characters and with the voice actors, you know, I think it only serves the game, you know, and, 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 and really serves the game immensely because like we talked about, I mean, I think people have a connection to these characters. It's very intimate when you're playing, you know, it can go on and on and on, as you know, with the, with the games, you can be playing for years. I mean, there's so much to investigate with these games and so much to experience with them. And so to have that connected feeling to um, the character, you know, it's indispensable. So I, I mean, I'm obviously, you know, a, a huge believer in performance matters and, and, you know, what we're trying to do with the strike, which, by the way, is still going on. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's that's a whole separate conversation right. to, be, to be had. Um, yeah, I just I know that a lot of of my friends and I, I mean, we've bought games because somebody that we knew was in it. I mean, it's it's to that level because we can kind of interact with you guys. You're not just voices anymore. Like we have faces to connect with your voice and, you know, you're on Twitter and you're, you're so accessible. And I mean, I know people who just who love Jennifer Hale or, or Steve Bloom and they're like, they're going to buy the game because their voice is in it because they know that they're going to deliver an amazing performance. Absolutely. I mean, they're, you know, Jennifer and, and Steve, I mean, they're rock stars. Um, Kevin, they're rock stars. And, you know, you, you know, you're going to get that rock star performance. And I think it behooves the gaming companies to hire these people and Absolutely. to, you know, protect them. I mean, the, again, there are several issues with the video game strike, but part of what we were asking for is just voice protection um, so that, you know, you go in, some of this stuff is, is, be, is very, very rigorous vocally. And you can imagine the combat. Yes. <laughs> It's really, really challenging. So we were asking and we are asking for protections for that um, because, it, you know, typically you get a four hour voiceover session, which for a day's work is not, you know, um, a lot of time. But for a vocal workout, it's exceedingly challenging to maintain that over four hours and then go to work the next day and have and have your voice there. Um, so that's just one of the the pieces to you know to performance matters and and to the strike was just asking that they you know that they take the the care to protect our voices and limit what kind of um, sessions limit the time that the session can be used for um, for our voices. Well, yeah, because I mean, you just said that you're there for four hours, and if you're doing a video game, you're you're basically by yourself, so you're just possibly screaming for you know, hours. And that's, Absolutely. that's gotta Absolutely. be trying. It is. It's very trying. And then you have to go, you know, and it's not like the video game is your only gig. I mean, if you're lucky, you've got other gigs, you've got, you've got to audition. So this is our livelihood. It's, um, it, it, it's as much as we love doing the games, as much as, um, we enjoy it. It's video games, you know, other than maybe an audio book, which is also very time consuming, video games can, can really, really be um, very stressful on the voice. How many times do you think you had to scream for Injustice 2? For like a death animation or... <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. It was spread out over some time, so um, it was a lot. And, and, and also, you know, she's a very different Wonder Woman. Yes. So that was... Yeah, it's hard. It was, it was hard in the beginning because... I'm used to the Justice League Wonder Woman and she's, you know, she's kind of my template, you know, she's, mm -hmm. she's my touchstone because she's how I started. And, you know, she's just, you know, so affable and, 
um, friendly and <laughs> compassionate. And this Wonder Woman is, it, you know, at, at one point I was joking, you know, and saying, like, does she have any friends in this game? Does anybody <laughs> like her? I mean, you know, who's she working with? And, you know, where's Batman? Hello? Here to help, Bruce? Yes, to keep you and Clark from making a terrible mistake. You know, it, it was just, it was so it was so different but then you embrace that because that's part of the journey in this game and um it's so kick-ass and so fun and and you know i got to be kind of i mean beyond sassy i mean i got to be really <laughs> bold and and yet funny too which i really really enjoyed um but it was just so kick-ass i mean like she's so formidable in this game Wonder bread. You lecture me. How much blood is on your ledger, Quinn? Oh, buckets full, honey. I was trying too hard to impress the wrong guy. Kind of like you with Superman. And that was fun to play. I mean, I, and I had to play that consistently. I mean, it was mostly that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't like, okay, now there's a, here's a scene, you know, where she's really, you know, quite meek and innocent. It's like, no. No, that didn't exist <laughs> in this game. Getting scratched, Diana. I don't mind a little blood. And, you know, that's what people are signing up for. And that's what pe people are going to buy this game. They know what this game's about. They saw, right. you know, they played the first one. They know what they're getting. And this, uh, you know, obviously um, amps it up hugely, which it should. How's it feel being the villain? You're the villain, Quinn. The lady's crazy yeah, than I. Absolutely. I was. It's funny that you say that because as I was playing, I played a little bit of the story and I played some multiplayer. And uh, I don't know how much of the story that you know, if you know any of it, because you, you know, were only reading for her part. Do you know the main story going on? You know what? I don't because you are just reading for your part. So like, again, when I was saying about the context, right. um, you know, you're not, I mean, you're shown certain things, but also they're very, very protective of the game when they're doing it because, you know, they want the fans to be surprised. They want it to be this huge thing where the fans are, are awed by what they're seeing and they're seeing it for the first time. They're, um, they didn't know anything about it. So no, I, I, I am not privy to that at all. Well, <laughs> The Joker drugged him, tricked him into killing his pregnant wife, Lois, and made him trigger the bomb that nuked Metropolis. Okay, no, you know what? I, I lied. I, I totally knew that. <laughs> I, knew that? I, do know, I did know that because, you, you know, you're sitting there at a the session and you do get some of the backstory. Yes. Okay. So I did know that. So it's a, it's a little dark. It's a little, yeah. <laughs> like the, the opening, you know, that pretty yeah, much happened right dark. away. And I was like, well, damn. I know. I know. So... Superman kills the Joker in response to this, and Batman is like, okay, I gotta rein him in, like, he's going too far, you know, being Batman. But what I found interesting, and which is very different from the, the Justice League show, is that Diana is on Superman's side. Yeah. Believe me, that was challenging. I, not that I, I wondered. I, I mean, well, you know, and it's not that I, I tease about this all the time because I, you know, I'm such a Wonder Bat fan, but... I, it's not that I don't love Superman and George right. in particular and Tim Daly. And I mean, I love Superman. Who doesn't? I mean, I grew up with Superman. I grew up with Christopher Reeve. So I, I'm a Superman fan, but, um, having my allegiance to him was just like, I'm sorry, what? You know, because... <laughs> Superman. This your idea of date night? You said ladies choice. I'm not used to that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's totally different and it should be. And it's fun that it's different. And it, it is. as an actor, you know, you get to play different, which, you know, is, is, is a thrill because, you know, we've all seen me do the Wonder Woman from Justice League. But I this is the interesting thing I learned about myself is I'm much more comfortable playing heroic. I enjoy, you know, some people say, well, they love to play the bad girl because mm -hmm. the bad girl is always more exciting. And and I I feel just the opposite. I like playing the good girl. Um, I like being on the side of of good. I really do. And so that's something you discovered. And not that it's not fun to go on the other side, but 
I know that I'd rather live on the the good side than live in the bad side. Fun mm-hmm. to visit and fun to shake it up, certainly. And I hope that the, you know I don't know that the fans knew that this was going to be me. Um, uh, I mean, I knew I knew it was going to be you because I have been following <laughs> the game okay. for, for and you for quite some time now. But I was I was very shocked when. I mean, the scene happens very early on in the game when she and Batman actually come together. Uh, I think it's either, I want to say it's one of the very beginning fights, if not the first one. And I was just like, oh my gosh. I know. You used to fight honorably. There's only honor in victory. The old Diana would disagree. I know. And the only thing that would have made it better is if I'd been able to play it with Kevin. Yes. um, Which, unfortunately, I mean, you know, you just don't do in a game. But I would have loved to have had those sessions with him because, you know, I love our um, our vocal play. I mean, it just it, it, it really is just that. So but you know, maybe in an animated show down the road. And I'll, and I should actually plug that we're, I will be seeing Kevin in Denver for Denver Comic Con because we're having a reunion of the Justice League. I saw that. It's very yeah. similar to the one that you had in New York. Not, it is. Not too long ago, right? Right, it is. And um, yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, that's just a joy because we don't really get to see each other very often, all of us. And when we did the New York reunion, and we were reading from some of the original scripts and you just, you like remember, it comes back so naturally and, and you just remember the magic of it. And, you know, and being in those characters together, it, you know, it's just a total joy. It really is. Well, yeah, and, and these people aren't just, you know, your coworkers, they're your friends. And they're friends who are like working and you don't get to see them. Right. And so when you do get reunited. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Um, it's, um, you know, it's just very sweet. It's very sweet. I really wish that you guys would have been able to record that together because, I mean, it was great. It was great. But I can just imagine because the banter between Wonder Woman and, and Batman in Justice oh. League, just like my heart. <laughs> I know. And, you know, and what's really interesting, and I do get asked quite a bit, is, you know, why we haven't been united again. And it, the answer to that question I get asked is, I don't know, because I think they really did have magic with that ensemble. And um, and the fans, like what I said earlier, I think when you're introduced to characters for the first time and so many people were introduced to Batman through Kevin Conroy, yep. you know, even if you knew other actors or like obviously Linda Carter is the embodiment of Wonder Woman for so many people. But I think like for the animation people, for the animation fans, how you get introduced is just, it it stays with you, it endures. So I'm, I'm so glad we'll be together in Denver because we don't get to do that and we don't get to play those characters together. And so right. we, you know, I get to do this or, you know, Maria gets to do that or Kevin does this or George. But to be able to be on the stage all together, that that'll really be a treat. Oh, I wish I could be there. I hope they record it because I really I hope they do, too. And believe me, I'll be tweeting out about it um, because I'm really proud that we've been able to do this and assemble everybody. Is is it everyone, all seven of you? It is not Carl. Carl okay. could not make it. He had a scheduling conflict, unfortunately. But it is everybody else, and it's Andrea Romano who. Oh, that's wa- so cool. Yeah, she's our was our <laughs> voice director. For those of you who don't know, and um, again, when we read from a couple of the original scripts in New York, and we'll be do- doing the same thing in Denver, and when you're on the stage, and when Andrea is is directing you, it's like. You know, it's there's just nothing like it. There really isn't as a, as a voice actress. There's just nothing like it being on the stage with those people voicing this character that, you know, I've come to just love really over the years. I just adore her. You know, there, it's it's I pinch myself. I, I can't believe I get to do that. It's really exciting. And honestly, I hope we record it because I think that's something that you need to put in an archive and allow people who can't make it to Denver, who couldn't make it to New York. Like you need to let people see it. It's it's like to me, you know, it's like I want to see the Broadway shows, even if they're if you can't make it to New York. And I'd love to provide some sort of um, history from the experience. So hopefully that'll be a recording and a video and 
and you know it'll be archived on on their site awesome so you've kind of decided that the hero for you is kind of the way to go have you ever like straight played a villain because wonder woman i mean she's she's mean in this game she's kind of you know she's got a little bit of a a, a mean streak to her but you, she's she's not you, the you, villain what do you mean no um, <laughs> she's totally mean she's totally mean and it was she like is. Yes. taste my blade submit to me that lunatic deserves to die you are not worthy I would just, you know, go to the, the sessions and I'd be like, no way. <laughs> you know, like, are you kidding me? Where's Ta where's my Diana? Oh, this is my Diana. Um, you know what? I played, I'm trying to think of the name of the show. It was, um, oh my gosh. It was a Marvel show. I can't think of the title now. Um, but it, I played a villain. And it was, it was, she was kind of based on Wonder Woman. That's why they hired me. Oh. Uh, because it was like kind of a nod to the Wonder yeah. Woman thing. But it was Marvel. So, oh, um, how dare you. I know. It was like really exciting. We don't talk about Marvel. <laughs> I know. Marvel. What's Marvel? And um, and so I got to play this straight out villainous, and in in the in the way that like you know really grand and 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 just bigger than life, and that was so much fun because if you're going to play a villain, Do, why not yeah. play right like over the top, right? You know, just crazy, and it was fun. It was really really fun, and that kind of character. You know, that's so enjoyable to do when you inhabit a character for a length of time like I have with Wonder Woman. You know, she there's I love the idea that she's a heroine and I love the idea that, you know, she is a female hero and um, there aren't many like her. So, you know, I, I've kind of clung to that because I think it's so special. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm an actor. So if I get to play a part and it's meaty and it's juicy, I'm in. You just seem so sweet that I have a hard time picturing you being like, although I did get a shock when I was playing Injustice. <laughs> <laughs> I got a shock when I was I got a shock when I was you know voicing injustice. I mean, it was like shocking. It really was. I mean, I, I I I'm telling you on a really personal level, it was not easy. And I just read on Twitter that somebody said it was it was just it was hard for them to reconcile the Wonder Woman from Justice League with this Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And I get it. It was hard for me to reconcile <laughs> it. I mean, I want people to know that it was really, you know, I won't say challenging because I mean it really wasn't challenging, but it was, um, it was, it was having to make that, you know, just having to adapt to that. And so it, I get what the fans are saying because, or that, that fan was saying because it was the same for me. Did you have to, when you were playing Wonder Woman for uh, the DC online game, yes. was, was that more towards like Justice League Wonder Woman or do you kind of see them as like just variants of each other? You know what that is? very much like Justice League Wonder Woman because S.J. Mueller, who writes and is um, the creative director for DCU Online, she was a huge, and I mean huge, Justice League fan. And S.J. and I would, before we met each other, I would only know her through my headphone because when I would do the sessions for Wonder Woman, she would be there um, in the recording booth in my earphone. She was in Austin, Texas, and I'm here in LA. And then when we met, I mean, it was just like, it was, I got to say her words and it was such a thrill to meet her and we've become friends. But she's a diehard Justice League Wonder Woman fan. Oh, she's a Wonder Woman fan all the way, but she was a huge Justice League fan. So the character is very much based on that characterization of Wonder Woman. And, um, I'm still voicing her. I mean, I just did a session. Really? A couple of, yeah, I just did a session a little while ago. So there'll be more coming from them, which is exciting. Were you recording that at the same time as Injustice? Because then you have like two different Wonder Womans that you're voicing at the same time. Yeah, which sounds schizophrenic. But you know what? It's not, <laughs> because it's not like, oh, you know, I'd love to portray it. Like I'm running from one studio to the next and I'm <laughs> so, so busy. But it's not like that. You know, I mean, if you're lucky if if you have a couple of things going on at the same time and by the same time, I mean in the same month or, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's again, at the end of the day, I mean, this is exciting and it's thrilling and it's a privilege to voice her, but 
at the end of the day, I'm an actor who goes on auditions and tries to get work and meaning Wonder Woman has given me because she's given me so many opportunities. Um, you know, you're still out there every day, hopefully, uh, just trying to get work. Yeah, I think that it's kind of glamorized almost, but the reality of the situation is you're auditioning all the time. I yes. mean, you're not just you're not they're not just throwing roles at you, even if even if you are as amazing as you are. So you're auditioning all the time. And I would imagine that that comes with a lot of rejection. It does. You know, the numbers are kind of crazy for all the things that you audition for and and what you get, you know, what you actually end up booking. Again, there are there are a few people that work all the time and are exceedingly talented and have a, you know, have a foothold in the in a certain area and you know they're not auditioning as much as most people but most voice actors are auditioning all the time trying to get the next gig and so it's wonderful when you get an offer like with Injustice or DCU online game and um, that's a rarity and it's it's just absolutely lovely. Did you kind of get used to that sort of lifestyle? Because, like I said, it's it's a lot of rejection. I think that would be really hard for a lot of people to cope with. I mean, constantly getting told no. And it's not even a personal thing. It's just there are so many people auditioning. You know, the part can only go to one person. Like, do you have any coping methods or do you, are you just used to it at this point? I think it's a lot easier with voice actors than it is with on camera. Because with on camera and theatrical performances it's so much about it's of course about your acting but it's also about what you look like yeah um, you know what if you're too thin you're too fat you're too this you're not ethnic you're too ethnic um you know it, it, it's a lot about that and with voice acting it's none of that so in that regard the ego doesn't take the hit that it takes and I have to say and I don't know if I cultivated this in just because of time but I go on an audition, I try to hit it out of the park each and every time. Um, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But then I let it go. And very, very rarely do I, you know, keep it with me to the point where, I mean, I've never, I, I haven't called my agent, I don't think in a hundred years to say, <laughs> did I get the job? I just don't do that. But once in a while, there's a part that's so good and you feel like, I Gosh, want I this. <laughs> I want it so badly. I want to play this character. She's so terrific and and dynamic and and smart and all this stuff. And you know, you you want it very very badly and you think you did an amazing job and you just don't know and you have to let it go at some point. Because then it I mean with with some of the stuff you don't hear about it for a while. You don't book it for a long time. With commercials, you know, um you know, I do commercials on television and with commercials you hear right away. I mean, it's really quick. It's rare for it to be like weeks or months later. With video games, it could be months later that you hear that you booked it. So it could be a situation where, oh, I forgot that I <laughs> auditioned Total for that role. What a surprise. Absolutely. In fact, you know, when you get to the job, you'll say, can I just hear what you heard from the audition? <laughs> I don't remember. And, you know, they'll give you, they'll play it for you. But yeah, I mean, I really believe that if, if this is what you love, it's hard, it's competitive, it's it's challenging to make a living for a lot of people. But if it's what you love, then you gotta do it. I mean, it, if not, you can't be in it and then just be complaining about how hard it is. Yeah. It is hard and it's only gotten harder and that's for many reasons, um, but that's what it is. And so if it's your passion, then it's your passion and you've got to do it. Absolutely. Which is which is what I tell people when they ask me about getting into voiceover. I will I would never discourage anybody, but I would also tell them what it's like to be doing this and at the same time, you know, if if you're new to voiceover and you've been doing it like 3 for 3 weeks and you know, you, but you have an agent and you go on an audition, there's nothing to say that you can't book it whereas I won't book it. It's one of those things where the longevity in some ways matters and in some ways it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, probably from audition to audition because somebody might just have what they're looking for. Exactly, and you're starting from scratch and, right. and who and who knows, you could absolutely just go in and, and, and read it and be brilliant and, and the casting director says, wow, I haven't heard that person before, she's fantastic. 
and you've been doing it for 20 something years and you know it, it's just um it's a little bit like the lottery these days and when you book something you know there's a sense of um euphoria almost because it's hard to book and uh wonder woman was just the you know it was an extraordinary break for me i got lucky i got lucky and and i have never lost sight of that 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 she has been with me for 17 years is and i've said this many times is just the greatest privilege of my professional life i think it's important too to emphasize that voiceover is not just doing a voice or doing many voices the acting is the core i think a lot of people may be a little bit naive to that i've gone to a couple cons and they usually have some sort of like voice you know voice actor panel or workshop or something a lot of times i think people are a little bit surprised that there's so much of an emphasis on the acting part of it yeah i mean you know it's it's interesting that you say that because so people will say oh you know do you do any acting and it's like well you know it's not like i'm wonder woman i mean it's not like i am diana <laughs> prince i mean you know there is acting you know and i think most voiceover actors have an act you know they have an acting background i mean very few people um get into this primarily because they just you know they they got into this because they wanted to be actors and most people i know don't only do voiceover they you know they're on tv they're in movies you know i'm one of those people that has only done voiceover i learned early on that being in front of a microphone was just a better fit for me than being in front of a camera but that was my choice but most people have an acting background they've studied it they've studied improv or comedy or serious drama um and i don't really know many people without that background frankly you know who haven't done theater who haven't done plays who haven't you know had some history with with acting i think people think that if they have if they can do a bunch of voices and sometimes that is the gift and that can get you booked on something um but when you first start out animation's very hard to break into and when you first start out you know no one's going to suggest that you start out in animation they usually start you out in commercial voice over first and then you break you try to break into animation after well in commercial is tends to be more of a long term gig or more i don't know if lucrative is the right That's word. That's the word. That is the word. <laughs> ding 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 ding. No, that is the word. It is lucrative. I mean, so much of voiceover is not lucrative. And, you know, that's one of the things that the video games that's another aspect of the video game strike that we were putting on the table that, you know, we wanted some fairness for when a game was making a billion dollars that the actor because the actor only gets a session fee. um the actor doesn't get residuals for for games so regardless of the success of the game the actor will only get what they get up front they will not get anything based on oh. the success of the game so and that's so, kind of like royalties so like they don't you don't really get anything after that nothing and wow. so that's something we went back to as a union and said you know let's be fair if a game makes a certain amount of money and it's a very incremental um and it's not all games it's only the games that make a certain level of money and have a certain level of success then you know then it has to be negotiated okay then the actor gets a, a piece of that but very few parts of voiceover are lucrative so if you're working on an animated series and you have regular work fantastic but video games are typically not lucrative unless you've got a lot of sessions and if you're a main character you know then and if you're famous then then obviously you're going to do better than the person who's going in as um soldier number 7 <laughs> who you know? dies 2 minutes in you <laughs> exactly so anyway i mean commercials and not even radio commercials but national television commercials are what a lot of people want to book because those are the ones more so back in the day than now but that's what people want to book because they can change your life financially if you book one that can really you know stay on the air for a long time so you should tell all the hopefuls not to get into voice over for money yes <laughs> you know that i think like that's good advice i think that's true i mean i really do you you i mean certainly there are people who make a great living at doing it but there are a lot of people that are just hustling and you know i 
I think anyone who's made a living doing this has to feel fortunate because for even even actors, even on camera, it's just harder. It's just harder today. There are more celebrities working. Um, yeah. There's just easier access to the parts. So well, people it, have booths in their houses now. Yes, I mean, they absolutely. can record right in their basement. Right, exactly, exactly. And um, and and it doesn't matter where you live. Um, it, you know, you can be in Minneapolis and have a brilliant voiceover career. There's voiceover everywhere. And, and, the, and the truth is, in the beginning, when I first started, people had no idea when I would say voiceover, people would say, what is that? And I'd have to explain what voiceover was. Now, when you have the conversation, you know, people are, are, are hip to it. They, they're very savvy about it. Oh, do you do video games? Do you do animation? Do you do this? Do you do that? You know, so it's very, very different. All right. Well, I have to ask. Do yes. You, do you have a favorite role besides Wonder Woman? Posing um, the hard question at the end. You know, now a role that I've done or a role that I will, you know, that I will do eventually. Um, either. You know, because one of the one of the favorite characters I had that I did was, you know, Viper on Jackie Chan, the Jackie Chan animated mm -hmm. series. And that was a great character and she was one of my favorites to play it was just a great ensemble it was beautifully written and you know i was just lucky i was just lucky to to walk into that situation you know i'd love to do something honestly i would love to do something shakespearean i'd love to do something like elizabethan I, you know that kind of thing that very that very royal kind of um experience i i, I would you know game of thrones that kind of oh thing oh my gosh I would love to do that. I mean, you know, that would be that would be a hoot to, to voice somebody like that. You know, very regal mm -hmm. and yet, you know, medieval. I, that that I would really enjoy doing. Like maybe a Cersei Lannister type, or yep. is that a little too mean? No, that sounds brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> and if you could have somebody make a call on my behalf, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> yes, no, I'm I in touch with so many people. Let me tell you. Well, but you know that, that that's like the joy of what I get to do is that you get to be all these different characters if you're lucky, if you're lucky. And that's why when I was saying before, once in a while, there's something that you just read on and you're like, wow, she's amazing. Because, you know, there are a lot of soldier tens and soldier fives. Oh, so yeah. When you, and, and when you get a character that's full bodied and, you know, the voice is the least of it. She's like this person. She's this human being. You know, that's that's a thrill to be able to do that. So, I, you know, having said, I mean, there, there's no one that can touch Wonder Woman. You know, I've, I've loved a lot of the games I've done. I've loved, you know, in Skyrim, I got to play some great characters. You know, it, it, so it's, it's all good. And I think the one that's still out there is, like I say, somebody with like a little bit of, you know, the taming of the shrew, something like that. You know, I, I would just love to do something like that. That would be pretty awesome. So, yeah. So, like, let's, you know, maybe maybe that's ahead of me. <laughs> well, I hope I hope that it is. Thank you. So where can people find you, like your social media and your website? Um, so they can find me on Twitter at Susan Eisenberg one. And they can find me on Instagram, which I recently joined, um, <laughs> which is Susan Eisenberg 21. I'm still navigating Instagram. And then they can check out my website, which is SusanEisenbergVoice.com. And that just gives you, you know, my bio. It gives you what I'm, I'll be doing, my appearances. Your demo reel, uh, which is My awesome. demo reels. And, you know, so that's, if anyone's interested in voiceover, they want to start, they can reach me. They can contact me directly and ask me any questions. They can listen to my demo reels and, and hear what I've done um, to get a sense of what goes into a reel. So, yeah, there's, there's lots of good stuff on there. And I'm going to be leaving links in the description of this video so that you guys can easily access all of that. Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you leaving links. You know. <laughs> Such a That's skill. How you roll. That's how you roll. Hey, it is a skill. It is a skill. I mean, I'm seriously, I'm so, like, people who are great at social media and, do, you know, I was so late to Twitter. I'm, I just started Instagram. I mean, thankfully, I have a website. I mean, like, it just, you know, there's a lot to, 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 to tackle and it's a lot to, um, you know, to figure out and to navigate. So, for, like, don't, poo-poo the links. I mean, that's like impressive <laughs> to me. 
Well, thank you so much for talking with me. This has been amazing to actually thank get to you. sit down and talk to you and get some insight on what it's like to actually be a video game voice actor. So I really appreciate you coming on. Well, you're so welcome. And thank you so much for reaching out. I, I was thrilled to do this. I really was. Oh, thank you so much. And and just enjoy the game. Enjoy injustice. Absolutely. It is and it don't, is and great. don't hold it against me. It was it was the, <laughs> the lines were written for me. <laughs> she's not really that mean. I'm not just, mean. She's not. I mean, you know, it's like I was just doing what I was, you know, paid to do. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps me out. And let me know in the comments how you're liking Injustice 2 and how any sort of voiceover performance has changed your opinion or made you feel something in a game. Because I know for me that voice actors are extremely important when I'm playing video games, and I've been very emotional because of that. So let me know in the comments section. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Wonder Woman wins.